Corsair Raptor K40 keyboard and M45 mouse are designed to provide best-in-class features and performance for gaming. Click now to learn more. Welcome to our Oculus Rift video. If you are just here for Crystal Cove, be sure to check the timestamp in the description of this video. If you are also here for Crystal Cove and the developer's kit, just continue to keep watching and we'll jump into that right away. When you first open the box, you're presented with the actual Oculus headset, the control box, which you end up plugging most of the things into, HDMI cable for the control box and a DVI HDMI converter just in case you need it, a power cable for the control box as well, a USB cable for the control box as well, a set of three lenses, both A, B, and C, which are very important, I'll get into that later, and some travel adapters just in case because they are shipping this all over the world. For you glasses users out there, there are adjustments on each side of the headset so you can change the distance of the lenses and the screen. That can be done with a coin or a flathead screwdriver or something like that. But if you can use contacts, that is recommended as wearing glasses will reduce your field of vision and there is potential that the lenses could come in contact with the glasses and in turn scratch them. The control box is relatively simple. It's fixed to the Oculus by a cable and for buttons it has power, brightness up and down and contrast up and down. In terms of IO, there's HDMI, DVI, USB and power and that's about it. One really nice thing about the control box and headset combo is that you can actually cable manage the cable to go around the side of your head and then down the back. That way if you put the control box in a good position you could replace their six foot HDMI cable with a very long one and have a power bar or something like that and make it so you're a little bit more mobile so you can spin in your chair very easily without the cable getting caught on anything. If you have an Oculus Rift or if you're planning on getting one in the future I would highly suggest going to riftenabled.com. They have a very good database of all the games that are compatible with Oculus Rift and their search function is awesome. Say you have a Kinect and a Hydra and a Rift you can tell it that and then it'll tell you all the games that can work with those different devices so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Another annoying thing is having the video feed for the Oculus go somewhere that isn't the Oculus. So to fix this what you can do is go to the executable file for the game that you're trying to run, right click on it and create a new shortcut, right click on the shortcut, go to properties and under the target text field after the very last quotation add space dash adapter space and then whatever number you have your Oculus plugged into for uh, video output slot on your graphics card. For me, it's number one. So I just have space dash adapter space one, but that'll be whatever you have yours plugged into. And this will tell the game exactly what adapter or screen it's supposed to run to, and that will push it directly to your Oculus. Now I have spent a gratuitous amount of time with my Oculus Rift. I love this thing, and thanks to Rift Enabled, I've been able to find a ton of different games to try, and it has been extremely fun but it's not ready, it's the developer kit, it's not the final version, it's not the consumer version, we know this. Um, but the, the observations with the developer kit is don't be way too excited about the developer kit. Be super ridiculously excited about Oculus and VR in general, but not necessarily the developer kit, because you still can definitely see the pixel grid. It does totally look like you're looking through a screen door. You can see space in between the pixels. I can't stress that enough. It's not perfect. There's also some features that will be in the consumer version that are not in the dev kit, enter Crystal Cove. Where the 1080p prototype brought us very obviously to 1080p from 720p on the dev kit, the Crystal Cove upgrades are not quite as obvious. It's still a 1080p panel, but it is a OLED panel with low persistence, which is actually extremely important, and I'll talk about that later. The more obvious part is the IR positional tracking on the camera, which leaves you with those IR LEDs all over the front and is obviously the reason for the name Crystal Cove. The positional tracking works by having a camera watch your oculus where there's the IR LEDs and so it can tell how it moves which is amazing because now you can lean forward, you can lean around. Before you were essentially a camera on a tripod that had wheels. You were moving around but it was very fixed. You could turn how you were looking and you could look up and down but that's about it. You couldn't really lean. Now you feel a lot more human and that massively increases the immersion. If you want to lean over and pick something up, it works. If you reel backwards, your character will reel backwards as if you are scared. It feels much more natural and breaks the whole boundary thing where it doesn't really feel like you're playing virtual reality because your character isn't actually moving with you. Now for micro movements, your character will move with you, which is amazing. In an interview with Oculus, it was said that the display is turning off in between frames to help with motion blur. 
taking that and the fact that it's an OLED display, if you go on Blurbusters and check out their OLED display motion blur article, which is actually quite good, it'll talk about how this works. So what they're probably using is point samples instead of sample and hold. And the idea of this is it will put an image on screen and then turn the display off so that it doesn't sit there for too long creating motion blur and they're not guessing what should be there, which is really problematic for VR experiences as well, which would also cause motion blur. And the strobing is so fast strobing as in turning off and on not yeah other terms of strobing um, it's it's so fast that you won't notice it yourself which is actually quite a good experience and will help you a lot with reading text and will help a lot with that that motion blur problem that the previous versions of oculus have had so essentially be excited, be super excited, post on the forums, post in the comments below, like and dislike this video, talk to your friends about it, tell your mom, and as always, subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.